And I want to share with you today kind of the worst travel that I've ever done. The question I've been asked a few times, what are your worst travel experiences? I think this might be the worst one. What's up Twitter? So come back to Stockholm in Sweden. I'm here for the first time. I got here last night. So we'll go back in time and by no means I want to complain because it's been kind of awesome to get here. And I'm really happy to be in this city and in this hotel which is awesome. You guys will see it in the next two days. But it's been a really tough time to get here. And this all started when I was back in Montreal. So I got to the airport really early that day. I was at a conference earlier in Cornwall as you guys might have seen in the past videos. And I got to the airport quite early, so I had some time to relax and everything. And then that whole mess started when I boarded the plane in Montreal. Quick simple flight from Montreal to Amsterdam. It's supposed to be a 6 hour flight, departing at 6.50 p.m. Eastern Time. And it seems that the plane stayed a long time at the gate. And I didn't really know why, so we kind of left a little bit late. But then the plane started to taxi and left for the runway. Now at some point the pilot kind of stopped in the middle of nowhere near the runway and said, well, we have a technical problem with the computer, we'll have to try to resolve it. So I said, well, okay, it's fine. He said in five, ten minutes, we'll be able to go and take off without any problem. So I said, okay, that's fine, like a small delay, doesn't really matter. I had enough time between my connection, of course, I had like about an hour and a half to go from that plane to the next plane in Amsterdam. So no big deal. But then that delay turned into a like 10 minute delay and then 20 minute delay without anything happening. And then the pilot said at some point, well, we have to return to the gate because the computer doesn't work. We have to call technicians to come in the plane and fix the issue. So we came back at the gate and that took some time. There was, of course, no gate available at Montreal. So we had to wait. The plane had to park in like the middle of nowhere. Near was supposed to be a gate, but not really a gate. And then the pilot says technicians will come in. They will be able to fix the problem in like 5-10 minutes again. Every single time that was like 5-10 minutes. So then the technicians probably come in, we couldn't see them, but they came in the plane, they kind of work on the issue. And then that was fixed. That was like leaving us to pretty much an hour of delay from that original takeoff. And I was a little bit stressed out about my connection because it takes time to you know, like to leave a plane, go to the other one when you have a transfer. And an hour and a half is fine, but if you only have 30 minutes, that's kind of tough to do the uh, transfer. Now it could be less than that, sometimes you take off late but get your place on time, it happens. But in that case, I didn't really know. So that delay, the time that it fixed it, probably left us like even more than an hour. And then when I thought that everything was fixed, when the pilot said, we're done with the problem now, they fixed it. Then the next thing was, they had to refuel the plane again because they spent some fuel by going around the runway without taking off. So they had to refuel again. And the pilot said again, five, 10 minutes, we'll be able to go, no problem. And so I said, well, like these five, 10 minutes, they add up pretty quickly. And a five minute always turns into a 20, 30 minute. So that's kind of fine, like you cannot do anything for it, but I really hate delays on airplanes. So now that like, yeah, five minutes ended up being like 30 minutes of refueling the plane and all these things. And then I thought the plane would take off like right away after, but then they had some paperwork to do, which took some time. Again, the pilot said, well, so now we've done with everything. We refuel, everything is fine. The computer works fine, but we have some paperwork to do. So paperwork says 5-10 minutes we'll be able to go. That turned in again into like a 20 minute delay or 20 minute delay. So we were to like 2 hours of delay inside the plane that we couldn't do anything, just like have to wait on near the runway for the plane to take off. And that was quite long. Like, it's it's really the first time that I stayed that long in a plane without leaving the airport, without taking off. And I didn't really like it, like it's not the best thing ever. So that was kind of fun. Now, I knew at this point that I would not make my connection in Amsterdam, there was no point. There was no way I could make it, it's like way too far and like it's a 6 hour flight anyway. And we're already 2 hours late on that time. But then I thought, well, it's like no problem, it's fine. They will just book me on a different plane later that day, no, no issue, right? That, that's totally fine. So then I get to Amsterdam, we got there like pretty much 3 hours late on the original time we were supposed to be there. And they said, well, all the flights before 10.30 are gonna be rescheduled. So you will have a different booking for that for next flight. Because, yeah, of course we got there like at 10 a.m. in the morning. So my flight was at like 8.15. So that was fun. And then the problem just got worse. When I got to the self-transfer counter where you can kind of 
do the transfer so if you have a new booking or like a different ticket you can print it there so I went to this counter and the machine could not find my flight could not print a ticket for me and all that was written on that machine was well you cannot check in more than 24 hours before your flight so I couldn't understand and then, and then I called an employee which were by the way really friendly so she came and she started laughing at like my ticket and stuff and she said well looks like they booked you your connecting flight on May 1st, which is like two days from now. And I said, well, what, like, what, what the fuck is happening? Why May 1st? And then I started to explain that I was coming back actually on May 1st, but apparently they booked the connecting flight actually on May 1st, on that same day, which is like really stupid. So I went in line, did the whole line of the transfer counter to kind of understand what was happening and try to make them change my flight to the same day because like, I don't want to stay two days at the airport at all. And I don't want to go back and I cannot go to Stockholm, my second flight, on the day I'm supposed to come back. It doesn't make any sense. So I went to that counter and then they said, well, all the flights are full. There was a company, a uh, Scandinavian airline on strike. So all the planes from KLM to Stockholm, even Air France and all the stuff were all full. And so I couldn't take any plane. And so they had nothing. They were all overbooked, which led them to check like a bunch of flights and all of them were also overbooked, all full. So the only thing they could do is they could put me on the waiting list for different flights. So they had like a, a list for me of like five flights to go to and I was on the waiting list for these flights. So that was kind of bad. So I didn't know at this point if I would be able to make it to Stockholm that same day because all the flights were overbooked. They had too many people for the number of seats. So my only option to be able to make it to Stockholm was hoping that people would not show up to their flight or people would miss their transfer and I would be able to get on the plane which was kind of frustrating a little bit so they gave me some coupons which was like a stupid thing of like 10 euros for a drink or a meal but at the airport you know 10 euros doesn't get you very far it's like <laughs> nothing basic thing a bottle of water is like that price pretty much so that was fine but fortunately enough I got access to the lounge because of the fact that before this trip and actually when I came back from Asia last week I got a credit card giving me access to lounges and I would highly recommend you guys do the same. So this is something that I didn't know I was going to get value for but I really see now the value. I've been in the lounge in Montreal, in Stockholm, in two different lounges and these were awesome. So you get the food, you get some drink, you get whatever you want, you have a place to work. I've been doing some really productive work there at the lounge and that's something that I would never be able to do if I was only at the airport, only like inside the, the terminals because these places are way too crowded, way too many people and the seats are really, really bad. So if you can get to the lounge, I would recommend. I'll put a link below for that credit card. This is the American Express Platinum card. Uh, I would really recommend. There's a, quite a bit fee every year for that card, but based on the lounge, based on the travel credit you get, based on all these factors, it's totally worth it in my opinion. So link below for that. You will also get a 15,000 bonus point for this if you want to get, grab that link. In addition to the offer they already gave you at American Express. It's up to you. If you want to check out that link, click the link below. Or just go on Google and search for that card. You'll find it pretty easily. Back to the story now. So, I was there at the airport, went to the lounge, got my bottle of water for like 10 euros with the coupon they gave me. And then I went to different flights. So, the lady said, the only thing is I would have to get a different ticket every time. So, I would have to go back to the transfer counter every time. I wanted to try to board a flight that was overbooked because they have to print a new ticket. So the original flight they booked me on the waiting list was at 5.30 p.m. Now keep in mind I was supposed to leave the airport there at like 8.45 a.m. So quite a big of a difference. But the lady at the transfer counter, the first one said there is a flight at 2.40 p.m. but it's highly overbooked so you might not be able to do it. You can check if you want but it might be wasting your time. So I said well I'll check anyway like I have nothing to do anyway at the airport. So I went to a different transfer counter a little bit later that day before the flight and when I explained the situation to the lady she said like oh come back later we're too busy right now. So I said like yeah, yeah it's fine but I still came back like maybe 20 minutes after just to get my ticket for that flight that I was not supposed to be making because it was like way too overbooked and so they gave me a ticket anyway they kind of did everything with my check bag and everything and I decided to just try it out because I had nothing to lose at this point. Went to the gate, the agent at the gate said, well, it's highly overbooked, so there's people even before you on the waiting list. You might not get it. And they always say, good luck every time they talk to you. So good luck, I uh, hope you make it and stuff. I said, all right, that's fine. So waited for a few minutes and they gave me a ticket not to board the plane, which was fine. So I'm not sure how they managed it, but apparently there was some people not showing up. The plane was completely full, 
but I was able to make it anyway. So got on that flight and then I was pretty much sure that my check bag wouldn't follow because like how did they kind of track this out and make it work when you miss your flight then you're on a waiting list for a flight so they cannot put your bag in a plane yet then they confirm you on the flight and that means that they have to kind of get your bag quickly put it in a plane I have no idea how they manage that so pretty crazy but when I got to Stockholm it took a long time like a 30 minute of waiting inside the airport after leaving the plane to start to see some bags on the conveyor belt there so that was kind of stupid that was kind of weird but I said, well, no one gets their back, so I'm not like bad. So there's nothing bad about it. I'm, I'm fine. I'm like everybody else. And then the bag started to roll in. I was really curious about where I would get my bag. And fortunately, for some reason, I got the bag. The bag arrived and everything was fine. So that journey of like a, a pretty much 10 hour journey total ended up taking about 24 hours. So pretty crazy. But these are things that happen when you travel. And the reason I said well, it's been kind of a bad traveling journey that time is the fact that I didn't know like what I would do. I didn't know like what I would be able to make. And I didn't have a step-by-step -step kind of thing to do. So I didn't know if I would make the flight at 2.40. Didn't know if I would even make the flight that day because they were all overbooked and they had no solution for me. So kind of a suspense, kind of a thing that I had to go through and stuff. And I was really tired from the past flight. Fortunately, I got access to the lounge, be able to kind of work there and, and just enjoy my time a little bit. And the driver that was supposed to pick me up in Stockholm came back twice, so once in the morning he realized I was not there so he had to come back later on when I told him to come back. So quite a weird thing, but fortunately I'm here, this has been working fine, I'm really happy about the hotel that I'm staying at this time, right in the river in Stockholm. So I hope that kind of explains to you guys some things and I don't want to make this a story where like you're going to be afraid to travel because of these delays and stuff. And this is the first time it happens to me, that big of a delay and that big of a mess. But these things don't happen often, so I'm really glad about the support I had from KLM, the people that were there, they were really awesome. Not all, but most of them, of course. And that was just something that he, that he had to go through. Hope that makes sense, guys. Please leave me a comment below. If you've seen something of the sort before, if this happened to you before, comment below, I don't know for sure. Here, after you come up with the past video, appreciate you guys for leaving your comments also in the comment section. And I'll catch you back here in Stockholm for another video tomorrow. Ciao.